What's up everybody? Welcome to the Voice Mag channel. I'm Patrick, your personal photo editing guru. Today I'm gonna to be comparing Photoshop on a laptop or desktop to Affinity on a tablet. The question is, is the world's most powerful desktop photo editing software ready to lose its crown to a mere tablet app? I'm gonna knock out a couple of the most common photo retouch tasks on desktop Photoshop and mobile affinity and we'll see how they compare to each other as far as ease of use can affinity on a tablet give you another reason to totally dump your laptop or your desktop and go strictly tablet that's the question i'm trying to answer today roll my intro <laughs> You might be wondering why am I comparing full desktop software to mobile software or mobile apps, right? But if you think about it, logically we should be comparing the two. Your tablets, they're now being built with dual core, quad core, and even six core processors. And they don't have the same type of hard drive space that your desktop would. The tablet is smaller, lighter, and more convenient to carry around. So if I can knock out the same things here that I can do here, that's a win for me. Another important reason is pricing. Photoshop on your desktop will run you a minimum of $9.99 a month. Yes, there are a bunch of added features of paying that $9.99 a month to Adobe and getting access to the Adobe Cloud Suite that you wouldn't get if you had Affinity. But Affinity itself is just $20 per. No, no per month. It's just $20. You pay $20 once and you have full access to Affinity. Now. From my experience, using Affinity on my desktop gave me the exact same experience that using Photoshop on my desktop gave me. Everything I can do in Photoshop, I was able to do in Affinity, as far as photo editing and photo retouch goes. Affinity promises to give the full desktop experience in one mobile app. And I'm trying to find out today if that's true. I'm gonna show you some of my most basic skin retouch. We're gonna do blemish removal, frequency separation, and dodge and burn. And then I'll give you my verdict at the end of which one I think did the best, if I would switch to a tablet, or if I would just incorporate this into my normal workflow. All right, let's jump into it. So on the left side of the screen, I'm running Photoshop CC on my MacBook Pro. And on the right side of the screen, I'm running Affinity on my iPad Pro. As you can see in both applications, I'm using the blemish removal tool to clear up some of the spots on uh, the model Abby's face. Both tools run or work pretty similarly. The uh, tool feels a little more natural in the Photoshop as opposed to how the tool feels in Affinity. Affinity does a different style of uh, selection, so it feels just a little bit different. So that's something you would end up having to get used to if you are switching from Photoshop to Affinity. Now, as far as the blemish removal tool goes, uh, what I'm noticing is that I feel that I'm getting slightly more natural looking results from Photoshop than I am from Affinity. Affinity seems to be doing a little bit of extra smoothening when I clear up these blemishes or when I move the blemish skin onto a uh, non-blemish skin to have it uh, content aware have that take over that that skin now the content awareness on Photoshop seems to be a little more spot-on to matching the skin textures and tones with each other so the results for blemish removal seem to be slightly better in Photoshop than they are with affinity and since I'm more used to the Photoshop tool I'm I seem to be able to get through blemish removal a little bit quicker now what you're noticing now is that I'm setting up the Photoshop since I finished blemish removal a little bit quicker in Photoshop. I'm setting up the side with Photoshop on the left side here. I'm setting up um, frequency separation. So I'm about to get into frequency separation now. Now if you've already seen my video on frequency separation, great. You know what's going on. If you haven't watched my video on frequency separation, I'll have the link in the description so you can go back and watch that. That way you know what exactly I'm doing with these different layers. One is a tone layer with no uh, texture and the other is all the texture on the layer. And what I'm doing is smoothing in out the, uh, 
the texture or the tone layer, excuse me, so I can still keep the skin texture but have the uh, the tone. And it's 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 kind of complicated, but not too complicated. Check out that video when you get a chance. Now, on the affinity side, what you might have noticed, if you didn't, there's a filter built in affinity for frequency separation. Now that blew my mind. The fact that affinity for my iPad is already equipped to do frequency separation. So I don't have to do the extra steps that I did in Photoshop to set up frequency separation. It is already there just as a filter. So what you've noticed, what you might have noticed is that by using the filter that's built into affinity, essentially I've caught up to Photoshop. Now, it took me a couple moments to actually set up that frequency separation. And no, I forgot to remember or mention a little bit earlier in this video that this is running about two times the speed that I actually edited it in. So when this video ends, it was about 20, 22 minutes worth of video worth of uh, editing, and it was slimmed down to about 10 minutes. Now, for the sake of fairness, I'm not exactly using all of the Photoshop shortcuts. Now, I can definitely tell you if I was using the Photoshop shortcuts, and I don't know why I didn't. If I was using the Photoshop shortcuts, it's no question that Photoshop, the speed of Photoshop would have knocked uh, Affinity out of the water. But my goal here was to show the ease of use, how easy it is to use Affinity compared to Photoshop, not exactly how fast Affinity is compared to Photoshop. Now with this frequency separation, uh, the goal is to select blotches or areas of skin and uh, smooth out the uh, tone so they match up and so it looks a little more even. And as you can see, Photoshop on the left, Affinity on my iPad on the right, I'm able to go through these frequency separation at about the, the same speed on both devices. I would have to say uh, if Photoshop won the first round of blemish removal, it, just because Affinity Photo has that uh, frequency separation filter built in, Affinity would definitely have to win the round of frequency separation. Now, in a moment, I'm going to be moving into Dodge and Burn. Uh, the Affinity side, I am setting up Dodge and Burn right now. On the Photoshop side, I'm going to be setting up Dodge and Burn in just a moment. Now, the plus about Dodge and Burn is that I can set up an action in Photoshop to set this up and get this going. Now, Affinity does have a filter set up for Dodge and Burn. So looking at those, in all fairness, I would have to say this is Ty. Uh, for the dodge and burn part. The results are pretty similar as well as far as dodge and burn. Now, let me break this down for you. In a moment after I finish the dodge and burn, I'm gonna exaggerate the dodge and burn a little bit just so you can see the the uh, uh, what it does uh, or just so you can see the results and see how easy it is to do dodge and burn in both of these applications. Now, to break this down for you, <laughs> if I was to choose, I this would be a hard one because I feel that I'm able to get some more uh, more natural results from Photoshop, but Affinity is not that far off. I'm able to get some really, really good results from Affinity. So having to pick, I would go with Photoshop, but I am going to be using Affinity because it's so easy to use it on the go. So there are going to be times where I'm going to have photos loaded in Affinity and I'm going to be editing photos on Affinity as opposed to waiting till I get home and edit on my uh, Photoshop or taking out my laptop and, and no, there you go. There's the side by side images. Photoshop on the left, Affinity photo on the right. Like I said, I'm going to be using both. Make sure you go over, if you like design, make sure you go over and check out my friend Hate by Design. I'm gonna have a link in the bio, uh, I'm sorry, a link in the description, and make sure you check out my other videos too. Hit like and subscribe, comment below. Happy shooting.